Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman, uh, GPR professor at LearnGPR.com and the president of Bigman Geophysical. And today I'm going to do a video responding to somebody who had a comment for us on YouTube. And so somebody asked about what are the specifications they should input into their GPR under certain conditions. And what they uh, were asking about is a 100 megahertz radar antenna. They're working in limestone geological conditions, and they want to look se uh, three to seven meters below the surface. And so in order to sort of figure out uh, what parameters they should be using, we're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of breakdown using math uh, to figure out two things. Number one is what's the time window that they should be using in order to get that depth in this condition with that antenna. And then the second parameter that they should be considering is uh, what's the sampling rate they should be using on their GPR uh, one-dimensional A-scan trace uh, oscilloscope, you know, depends on which uh, manufacturer you have, they're going to call it a different thing, but what is the sampling rate they should be using to convert the analog signal to a digital signal? Um, there are presets in most GPR systems, but we'll talk about how do you define what's appropriate and is your preset enough to account for the depth uh, uh, that, that you need. So how do we do this, right? So the two things we want to figure out. One is time window. And then two is going to be sampling rate. So for the time window, what you need to know is how fast is the GPR wave moving. And the way to figure that out is what are the uh, uh, geological conditions, right? What are the soil that it's moving through? Or what's the rock that it's moving through? Because the GPR wave is going to move at a certain speed or velocity through every given material. And that speed is going to be different depending on the material that it's moving through. So in this condition, uh, in limestone, the dielectric permittivity, or dielectric constant, which we often uh, use as a K to define it, is typically going to be an average of seven. And that's across the board in many different uh, uh, tables you can go to. We just pulled out um, the Ground Penetrating Radar book by uh, David Daniels, and, uh, and that's what, what they had for limestone in, in, in his book. So the velocity for uh, uh, a dielectric of seven is gonna be 0.115 meters per nanosecond. And so how do we get that? Well, the equation to figure out what the radar velocity is in any given soil or geological condition is the following uh, equation. So velocity is going to equal, which could be V or sometimes C prime we talk about, uh, equals the C divided by the square root of K. So that means the velocity of the radar wave in any given circumstance is going to be equal to the speed of light divided by the square root of the dielectric permittivity. So that would equal 0.3 meters per nanosecond divided by the square root of 7, which equals 0.115 meters uh, per nanosecond. Okay, so that's the velocity of the radar wave in limestone. So once we have the velocity of the radar wave in limestone, to figure out how large of a window do we need to set our GPR to, to go three meters or seven meters, is you have to divide three meters or seven meters by the velocity in meters per nanosecond. So if I divide uh, uh, three, uh, I'm sorry, seven meters, right? So we have seven meters. Now that's seven meters down to the maximum depth they need to go, right? Times two, because the radar wave has to travel back up to us as well, okay? Equals 14 meters that the wave has to travel in total two-way travel time, right? In, in total two-way uh, two travel. Now, we tend not to take this at face value, because what if it's moving a little slower than we anticipate? What if it's not seven meters down, it's seven and a half meters down, whatever they're, they're searching for? So we usually put a buffer um, on this, right? So we'll say 14 meters times, let's say 1.25 um, uh, something along those lines, uh, is going gonna, is gonna to equal, right, it's 14 uh, plus a quarter of that's going to be three, so that'd be about 17.75 um, or, uh, you know, about 
uh, 18 meters, right? Some, something along those lines, okay? So 18 meters. So that is an appropriate amount uh, to have. And you can double check my math. Is that correct? 17.5, okay? So 17.5, you know, or 18 meters uh, is gonna be an appropriate uh, uh, amount over here in order to figure this out. So 17 to 18 uh, meters. So 18 meters, right, divided by 0.115 meters per nanosecond is gonna give us a time window of, right, and the other way, you know, if, uh, if you want to do it, you could do, um, you know, 1,800 centimeters, right, divided by, um, you know, 11.5 centimeters. You know, e either way is going to work out the same, right? So 18 divided by 0.115 meters is 156. Okay, so 156 nanoseconds. That is what an appropriate time window is for... A 100 megahertz antenna or any antenna working in limestone trying to go seven meters down, that's going to be an appropriate time window. Okay, if you if you made it to 14, you're running the risk of uh, of cutting off right parts of your response that might be relevant to you. So we put a buffer on it. In this case, about a quarter, and you can put it somewhere between 0.2 to 0.5 is going to be an appropriate buffer. It's up to you to choose. But for uh, putting a point one, you know, the point two five buffer is, is very appropriate. So that's one hundred and fifty six nanoseconds. That is what you should set your time window to if you're working in limestone trying to get down to seven meters. A hundred megahertz antenna is going to be something that likely has the ability to go down uh, seven meters uh, in the subsurface in limestone because it will have limited uh, attenuation effects. So one hundred and fifty six nanoseconds is what I would put the time window in if you're trying to reach seven. If you only want to reach three now, uh, uh, meters down, then you would do the same process, but it would just be for three meters. Okay, so the next question is, what's the sampling rate you should use for a 100 megahertz antenna when you're trying to open a window of 156 nanoseconds? So in order to do this, okay, you're gonna do a multiple of the frequency. And so sort of the standard uh, uh, um, sampling rate uh, is going to be basically two to or three times the frequency because it's two times the maximum frequency of your, um, uh, 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 two times the, the, the maximum frequency. So if you have a 100 megahertz antenna and it has a Bandwidth that's plus and minus 50%, which is standard for radar, right? So the bandwidth of 100 megahertz is going to be about 50 to 150 megahertz. So two times the highest frequency would be, right, three, uh, uh, 300, right? So that would be, I'm sorry, it would be 300 megahertz, which is three times the central frequency, right? So standard, and this was the original way to do this, was... Uh, was sampling is going to equal um, 1 divided by 3F for frequency. So it came around that this was probably not appropriate enough for ground penetrating radar. So in, a, uh, uh, in another book by Harry Joel, they basically came up with the idea that you should actually move this to a higher density. And they suggested 1 divided by 6 times your frequency. And this should give you enough of a sampling rate to reconstruct a full waveform of the returning signal. In a recent paper, there was a test of, does six times the frequency give you enough of a full waveform when you're trying to evaluate uh, absolute amplitudes? And they found that it's insufficient. And they proposed one divided by 12 times your frequency is going to give you a sampling rate that's appropriate to have less than a 5% error in your amplitude on your peaks. And so we're going to go with this, okay? This is a, a pretty recent paper, and I can put that uh, in, the, uh, in the description below, uh, a link to that, to, to that paper, as well as to this book, as well as to this one. We can put also uh, links to all of those. So what does that mean? Right? What does one 
divided by 12 times the frequency, and that would be in gigahertz. Okay? If you wanted to do this in megahertz, then it would just equal 1,000 times 12F in megahertz. Okay? You're going to get the same number either way. It's your choice. Um, but then what should the sampling rate be going down 7 meters with a 100 megahertz antenna that you need to open it up to 156 nanoseconds? So it would be, we'll say 1,000 times 12 times 100, right, megahertz. Right? So that would be basically 1,000 divided by 1,200, right, which equals uh, one, I'm sorry, that would be, what did this equal? 0 0.83. 0.83. Okay, 0.83 of a nanosecond. So this is in nanoseconds. Okay, that's what the sampling rate is. So in order to get the number of samples that you should be at for 156 nanoseconds, is you're going to divide 156 divided by 0.83 is going to give you a sampling rate of One eighty-seven nine five. One hundred eighty-seven point nine five. So this would be uh, your. Uh, that would be a number that would be considered an appropriate sampling rate for a hundred megahertz antenna working in limestone trying to go down seven meters. Okay, that's what that number is. Most of our systems have five hundred and twelve as uh, as a preset number for samples. So if you use 512 trying to go down 7 meters, um, in this case, you're going to be well within an appropriate level to reconstruct the waveform for a 100 megahertz antenna in limestone trying to go down 7 meters. So that would be more than you need in order to uh, uh, accomplish what you're trying to accomplish and maximize the likelihood that you have minimum error in your waveform and maximize the likelihood that you're going to actually get a, uh, an appropriate depth on investigation uh, to see whatever you're trying to see that seven meters down. So that's sort of the basic math of it. And that's uh, uh, um, how many nanoseconds right, does your time window have to be opened? And then what's an appropriate sampling rate in order to reconstruct that waveform with limited error? Um, and so again, 187 for a 100 megahertz antenna, that would be considered um, a, a fine for uh, 500 and, you know, and, and 12 uh, samples, which is pretty standard on many, on many systems. And you can change this out, right? So if, if, for example, we decided, well, we want to go do a, another, another example. We want to go three meters down, and we're, instead of using 100 megahertz, we're going to use a 250 megahertz. Okay, same thing in limestone, but instead of seven, we're going to go three. Then we would just start this process over. Right, so ultimately, what will happen is our time window will have to be shorter because we're only going three meters down. And our sampling rate may actually have to go, uh, um, well, it, we'll see what it, what it turns out to be. But if these were the parameters, right, three meters and then 250 megahertz, then our time window for three meters is going to be three times two because it's two-way travel time times 1.25 with our buffer. All right, so that would be six, uh, be seven and a half. Yep. Okay, so 7.5 uh, meters. And so divide that by 0.115 meters per nanosecond. And that equals? 65.21. 65.21. Okay, so, so the answer would be 65.21 nanoseconds is going to be an appropriate time window, right? So 65 nanoseconds to go three meters down uh, in limestone, okay? So that's what we would expect. A shorter window is needed to go a shorter, uh, a shallower depth. So we have 65.21. Uh, so taking the second piece, what sampling rate should we have? Well, in this case, 
we say 1,000 divided by 12 times 250, right, in megahertz. And so that equals uh, 1,000 divided by 3,000, 3, right, and so that's just 0.33, right? So to get the sampling rate, we would do 65 nanoseconds, right, divided by 0.33 equals 196. 196. So that would be an appropriate sampling rate for a 250 megahertz antenna going down three meters to limit your, uh, your error um, to less than 5% for your amplitudes and basically giving you a full waveform. Again, for most systems, 512 is going to be a pretty standard uh, number available preset for samples, meaning that this does not violate that. And I would, I would tend to use 512. From a practical standpoint, we often just use 512 because it usually satisfies what we need and it doesn't slow us down during data collection. This is the concern, is that your sampling rate goes up, your data collection uh, uh, time uh, becomes longer because it takes more time for the system to process more samples. But 512, we have not found under, at least for subsurface, uh, uh, 512 to be a number that slows us down. So we sort of, you know, force ourselves into a really good high quality uh, waveform response, you know, a, a full reconstruction of it with limited error uh, for that reconstruction uh, by using sort of the standard 512. If you're going to go much deeper, if you're looking to go uh, 10 meters, 20 meters, and you have a 100 or a 50 or a 25 megahertz antenna, then you may have to go up to 1,024 or uh, 2,048. Um, but you can do the math to figure out what's a good enough uh, time window and what's an appropriate sampling rate um, for that antenna in a given condition at a given depth. So I hope that this was helpful. Uh, please pass this along to someone else that you think might be, uh, this might be of use uh, uh, to them. Make sure you go check us out at uh, bigmangeo.com. Again, bigmangeo.com and check out our newly updated uh, event calendar for our upcoming training workshops. We are going to have hundreds of training workshops uh, over the next 12 months, and we'd love for you to be part of it. Subscribe to this channel, please. If you found this video worthwhile, subscribe to it. If you hated this video, then go ahead and curse me out in the comments. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Good luck to you out in the field.